If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. So now that Gitaxian Probe has been banned, where does Infect go from here? Judging by the name T1 Glistener Elf, you can probably imagine that I've been thinking about this quite a bit. And even before the banning happened, I was debating, okay, if this gets banned, if that gets banned, if the other, how is the deck going to change? Gitaxian Probe, I think, is the most interesting choice because it gives us the most flexibility. If, say, Glistener Elf or Become Immense were banned, the decisions would be a little bit easier. In the case of Glistener Elf being gone, <laughs> we'd switch to either a wholly different type of Infect deck or just not Infect anymore, right? But Gitaxian Probe already was serving a supplementary role. You very much wanted to have it, but it wasn't completely necessary to the deck. If you drew the cards you would have gotten with Gitaxian Probe anyway, the deck would have worked. Given that, first of all, before I define some, or suggest anyway, some switches that you could make, Let's go over why Gitaxian Probe was good in the first place, so that that will give us a, a direction that we can use. The first is, I think the most obvious, it filled our graveyard awfully quickly. For the low, low cost of zero mana, just two life, you can get a card in your graveyard that replaces itself. And this gave you becomements much more readily, a turn more quickly on average, or thereabouts. Because you don't have Gitaxian Probe anymore, you won't be running as many Become Immense. If you decide to keep four Become Immense in your deck, they're more likely to be dead. Um, you're not going to get them online as quickly, and multiples are harder to cast. I personally have been running three Become Immense for some time, with the fourth one being replaced by Wild Defiance. But that's because I'm an especially cautious Infect player, uh, it's I, I don't go super all-in all the time. Um, and also it's a meta thing. In metas around here, it tends to be the case that there are more low-to-the-ground spot removal decks playing, say, Lightning Bolt or whatnot, for instance, Kolagon's Command. So that's the first one. That's the easiest one. When you build your Infect deck, let's say you just stick with this staple Simic list. You're already losing four, become, or four Gitaxian Probe, probably two become immense, putting you down to about two. That means that if you just want to stick with Simic Infect, you have six flex slots now available to you. And you have a bit of a choose-your-own-adventure on which way you can go. Before I make some recommendations for that particular deck, though, let's talk about what else it gave us. It kept us... number two. It kept us from playing worse cards. It gave us... it's, it's the filler role in the deck. Again, you don't need it because it just gets you into the other cards that you would like to have, but it, it makes you much more consistent and enables some bigger plays like earlier become events. If you're familiar with, say, Legacy Charbelcher, there are actually only 48 cards in the deck, in, in a way, because you're running 4 Gitaxian Probe, 4 Street Wraith, which all 0 mana replace themselves, and then 4 Mana Morphos, which costs two mana, but gives you back two mana, so is essentially free. All of them just draw you a card and replace themselves, either not using any mana or giving you back just as much. In that way, you it does make mulligans harder, admittedly, but it makes you more consistent. You're more likely to have the turn one kill in that deck, because you only have 48 cards to go through, not 52 or 56 or 60. In Infect, we have that issue to a certain extent. You're less likely now to go off on turn 2 or 3. Notwithstanding Disruption, which I'll get to in just a second, you're less likely to go off as quickly regardless. Now, you can just operate under the assumption that you will be slower and build on that, or you can try to go all in to make up the difference. Oh, and somewhere in between, of course. Um, so those are the easier ones, and now that we have those, Let's talk about the more nuanced, but really more important, uh, aspects of Gitaxian Probe. It gave us information. It let us look at our opponent's hand. And yeah, that seems super obvious, right? But no, that, that's, that's crucial. It's 
part of the reason why Getaxian Probe is banned and Street Wraith isn't. Being able to see your opponent's hand in a deck like Infect, that's, I would say, the most important aspect of the card. The whole thing's important, but the ability to say, to look at your opponent and say, you can't bluff me anymore. I know what you have and I can play around it, is a huge advantage. If you tried to play Infect without Getaxian Probe, you felt that. Your opponent always had to, assuming they were playing a deck that could bluff removal. They weren't, say, Pyromancer Storm or something, or some spicy homebrew. Uh, it was always, the onus was on you to get through their potential disruption. Alternatively, you could get the hard read, or, you know, find another way, say, peek or read through their plays to see that they did not have the removal, but in one way or another, the onus was on you to get through them. With Getaxian Probe, it's the other way around. The onus is now on your opponent to find an answer, or to find enough answers to overpower the protection that you're now ready to hold up. So there are a number of ways that you can go about filling this void. The easiest way, I think, wh what I'm going to be doing is since you're not going to have that information, operate under the assumption that they either always have it or almost always have it. So, for example, if you're running a Simic list, you'll run the four vines, of course, but you'll run the four blossoming defense, and I, I say four. You'll run more protection for your creatures, more hexproof, more of a way to keep them from being killed with spot removal, because you're going to assume that they're more likely to have it at a given point. You're also going, you know, and Spell Pierce, by the way, in the Simic list. Spell Pierce is their tool. Uh, it'll also protect your creatures from Wrath Spells, which if the format slows down as much as we might expect it to, you might start seeing some Supreme Verdicts, some Wrath of God, some Damnation, uh, what's the fourth one in the gifts package? Day of Judgment. You might start seeing those more often. So Spell Pierce really can shine there. And of course, being a one mana, it fills your graveyard quickly in, for the Become Immense copies that you do still have. That's if you want to go Simic. Uh, we'll get to some other options unrelated to protecting your creatures in just a moment. But next you could try to go for, so what's another way to look at your opponent's hand? With Getaxian Probe, you just got to see it, but you couldn't really do anything off of it. Instead, you drew a card. If you're running a black deck, though, you can play discard spells. You can play Inquisition of Kozilek, you can play Thoughtseize, you can play Duress, you can play whatever you want to. But you can not only get the cantrip to fill your graveyard a little more readily, you can stop your opponent's removal, stop their hate cards, say a Malira or a Spellskite, because you're going to get this out sooner, notwithstanding Ramp, Simeon Spirit Guide. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's crucial. Instead of gaining a random card, you're going to be taking away your opponent's best card, or what you think is their best card. Now, admittedly, discard is a lot more skill-intensive. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for newer players. Uh, but if that's your cup of tea, if you like playing more skill-intensive games with more decisions, this is the way to go about doing it. Now, another thing that I like about this, I am T1 Glistener Elf, but you may have noticed I don't cast the T1 Glistener Elf all that often. Back when Getaxian Probe was around, if I cast the T1 Glistener Elf, it was Getaxian Probe. Oh, I don't. I see you don't have anything, Glistener Elf. There were other reasons. If I knew they were on a deck that couldn't do anything about it, or if I just had enough creatures that I could afford to out attrition them, etc. But now you can go turn one, take whatever card out of your hand, turn two Getaxian Probe, and hold up the Vines or the Blossoming Defense, or Apostle's Blessing, or Spell Pierce, or whatever have you, based on your color combination, and your personal preferences. If you're running black, this also gives you the ability to run one of the best creatures in modern for the purpose of built-in resilience that doesn't have the word Hexproof in its name, and that of course is Phyrexian Crusader. This is a 3-mana, 2-2, two -two, First Strike, pro-red, Lightning Bolt, Pro-White, Path to Exile. Now, yes, yes, I know, Fatal Push is being printed, and that's going to hurt Phyrexian Crusader. And because it has black-black in its cost, that means that you won't be able to use 
uh, a land that taps only for green, say a basic forest or a dryad arbor, and noble hierarch. So that makes getting it out on turn two a little bit harder. Those are both true. Nevertheless, this makes it one of the easiest creatures to protect that doesn't have hexproof in the game. It means that you already don't have to worry about Lightning Bolt and Path to Exile, and Fatal Push you can deal with with your other protection spells. Plus, First Strike. First Strike plus Infect, match made in heaven. So those are all true. You, if you want to run black, and by the way, I've run previously a mono-black list. Mono-black Infect. Uh, the creatures in the main board, there weren't too many. Uh, Ink Moth Nexus, of course. Uh, Phyrexian Crusader, of course. Phyrexian Vat Mother actually, because it's a 4-mana four 4-5, four uh, so it got around Lightning Bolt. Doesn't get around Dismember, uh, but it, and sometimes will get around Fatal Push, say if they've run out of fetch lands. Uh, and it has Infect. It does give you a poison counter every turn, but unless you're playing against the stalliest opponents or the mirror, that really doesn't matter. I considered putting in one Skittles, and I might have had it in the sideboard. Uh, Skithrix the Blight Dragon, for those that don't know. Skittles! Uh, just as, as, as a legendary creature, there's an opportunity cost for running more than one, but it's an awfully efficient creature. It has regenerate, you can give it haste, uh, flying, infect, it's, it's a great card. And then, of course, because you're running black, you could run Dismember, you could run now Fatal Push, you could run Discard, you had a few other uh, options, potentially. And because of all the instant sorceries, I ran Rune Chanter's Pike. It's a choose-your-own-adventure. There are plenty of ways to go about building the list. Um, and I also like Cathedral of War, by the way, in there. Um, next, if you want to try to run a more... Like, again, let's say that you're, like me, assuming that they always, 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 always are going to have a way to kill your creature. Another way to go about... Um, defending them, protecting them, is by playing a Selesnia list, which is actually what I'm going to start out experimenting with. I have most of the cards already that I'll be needing. So, white cards. I'm not trying Lost Leonin. <laughs> it's a 2-1... what, French vanilla? Not French vanilla. Infect vanilla, I guess. Phyrexian vanilla. Uh, just a 2-1 infect creature for 2 mana. Considering that it has to compete against cards like Blighted Agent, Unblockable for just one less power, or Plague Stinger flying for one less power, or Icker Claw Mirror for either one less or one more power. No, no, it, it's not a good card. So, given that, instead I'm going to be trying Priest of Norn. Now, it is three mana, and its mana cost is easier to cast, so thankfully it'll work more readily with Noble Hierarch. Uh, but it is a 1-4 Vigilant Infect creature. The Vigilance isn't as relevant, it's the 4. That means that on its own, it survives the Lightning Bolt. And of course, Kolagon's Command and other cards like those. That makes it, in this list, the most resilient Infect creature, with a possible exception of Ink Moth Nexus, because instant speed only, and yada yada. So that means that you then have to worry about Path to Exile and Fatal Push, but even then, Fatal Push has a little bit... It's, it's not as easy for it. They'll need to turn on Revolt. Is it a great card? No, I don't like that you can't play it on turn two and hold up protection for it, which of course you can do with a two-drop Infect creature if your turn one play is Noble Hierarch. So you could go Noble Hierarch and then, say, Blighted Agent with one mana up if you hit both your land drops. You can't do that with a 3-drop, although it having 4 toughness means you're less likely to need to do that as a 3-drop. Uh, Path to Exile will get it, and uh, Fatal Push that early in the game will probably get it. But it's possible you'll get out. It's an option. Uh, also, Viridian Corruptor I'm going to be trying because I anticipate the rise of Affinity and Aldrazi a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. And uh, that'll give me, just maybe as a one-of in the main board, um, it'll give me something else to do against them. I'm just going to try one in the main, a few in the side. If that doesn't work, if I'm wrong, if that's not how the meta goes, move them in the sideboard. I definitely want them in somewhere. Okay, so, you can alternatively not, uh, and by the way, other white cards, Apostle's Blessing now has less of an opportunity cost, 
Um, Emergence Scathe, I believe, is the rebound one mana protection from a given color. Yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty nice, right? You get to protect your creature on your opponent's turn, and then give it protection on your turn to try to get through their blockers. Apostle's Blessing and Emergence Gaze and other protection cards aren't going to be as effective against Eldrazi, which might, might, be on the rise, not so much because Infect has been gimped, but because Dredge has been gimped. Remember that Eldrazi were having to dedicate five to eight sideboard slots against Dredge? No mas, no more. They don't have to do that anymore. And so Eldrazi, if they end up showing better results, your white protection cards aren't going to do you as much good. You'll be yearning for the days when you could play Slip Through Space and Distortion Strike, for instance. And other such cards. Artful Dodge. No. Uh, alternatively, and, and also, while I'm on white, you can run Path to Exile. Duh, right? When the Bogles deck started running Path to Exile, I didn't really understand that at first. Then I started to see its effectiveness. It would take out hate cards like Spellskite, and it would get through bigger blockers earlier in the game. Usually, you can take them out quickly enough that you don't care about giving them the one extra land. This is mostly true in Infect as well. Uh, it'll give us mainboard hate against Malira, against Spellskite, etc. But it's also the case that you can run... So if you're familiar with Infect in Legacy, what, what's the best removal card in Legacy? It's got to be Swords to Plowshares, right? I guess Wasteland, if you want to count that as a removal card. Kind of is, but I mean for creatures. It's Swords to Plowshares. One mana, exile the creature, they gain life equal to its power. Jackal in Infect. It means Jackal. And so you've seen some Infect players run Bant so that they can include main board or sideboard Swords to Plowshares. There's no opportunity cost, right? You're giving them, there's already very little to the card, but you're giving them life, which Infect doesn't care about. And so as a result, in addition to Path to Exile, you could run a card like Oust or Condemn, which put the whatever target creature in their library and give them life. In other words, it puts them in their library. And that's all you really care about. Uh, oust is sorcery speed and it puts them second from the top. Condemn is instant, but it requires them to attack. Usually not as good as Path to Exile, of course, but both are, with some frequency, heard as budget replacements for the card, if you don't happen to have our handy-dandy shards block uncommon. Alright, so, finally, if you're not going to assume that the opponent has it, or even if you are assuming and you just want to YOLO it, <laughs> you can go all in. Now that you don't have Gitaxian Probe, you can replace them with something else. You may have noticed that, as I've been playing in fact, I've gone from zero to four mutagenic growths, um, just depending on what the meta looks like. And part of that is because mutagenic growth doesn't save your creature from, say, a lightning bolt. But if you're trying to go for the super quick kill, mutagenic growth is kind of the way to go, right? As a result, if you want to, say, uh, replace the four Gitaxian probes, if you're not already running them, with four muto mutagenic growths or four ground swells, keep the four become immense because you're going to be dropping other cards into the graveyard, uh, you're still going to want fetch lands for the become immense cards, and it'll give you dried arbor. So you won't just want to do all forest, but this gives you another way to go about doing that. Uh, Easily enough, right? Fetch land, fetch land, fetch land. That's three card... No, let's not assume that. Uh, you'll, you'll still have to worry about the usual. Because Fatal Push is getting printed, you might see a rise in black decks. I would be very surprised if you did not. Which means Liliana of the Veil might show up more often. And if that's the case, you'll need fetch land for Dryad Arbor, uh, in addition to just fueling for Becomements. But yeah, you could go for the super all-in route. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to, by all means, just go right ahead. Uh, and you'll you'll be able to play Dismember still. Uh, you can still play Apostle's Blessing. You can just have a ton of pump spells. You're, you know, what's the list? Your four Might of Old Crosa, four Mutagenic Growth, four Become Immense, four Ground Swell, if we want to go there, four Vines, four Blossoming Defense. I've named, what is that now, 24? And then some number of Apostles' Blessings, some number of Dismember, uh, four Glistener... Okay, okay, I'm, 
I'm giving you the laundry list, but you get the idea. These are options for you if you want to just try to speed kill your opponent. Alternatively, uh, an idea that's certainly not been pioneered by my friend, but he took the, uh, the idea of his own. On my channel, you may have seen Gruel Infect show up a little bit. It's running red mostly for the cards Assault Strobe, which is a one-mana double strike uh, at sorcery speed, and Teamer Battle Rage, which is a two-mana double strike, and they gain Trample if they're ferocious, which this is Infect. They're, they're ferocious. Uh, and so as a result, this gives you also a relatively consistent turn 3 kill. Red isn't going to do very much on protecting your creature. Of, of course it's not going to. And it doesn't really give you any good infect creatures. Uh, not really anything great in the sideboard. Maybe. <laughs> but, but it does give you another way to go about quickly taking out your opponent. Um, just play the usual four pumps like Might of Old Crosa, Vines of Vastwood, maybe Groundswell, and then any card that gives Double Strike, and on its own, one from, say, Glisten Elf, plus four from, say, Mata Volcrosa, times two from Double Strike, ta-da! Potentially a turn two kill. With some consistency, he's been able to do it. So that's an idea for you as well. Now, the last aspect that we'll get to... Sorry that that took so long, but there were plenty of options that I wanted to touch on. The last aspect of Gitaxian Probe is, of course, its card draw. Card draw is, I touched on it earlier with the filler roll aspect of the deck, it keeps you from playing worse cards. Imagine if Charbelcher, you had to replace those 12 cantrips with free cantrips, with something else. You'd have to play worse cards in their stead. Now, with Gitaxium Probe, it didn't just do that, it gave you another card, which got you back into the game more quickly. I have seen players as good as John Finkel run Sleight of Hand, in fact, because, now, you could run Sleight of Hand, you could run Serum Visions, they're not strictly better one than the other. Serum Visions gives you only one card's worth of reach on the turn you cast it, but two thereafter, the two the next turn returns, and Sleight of Hand gives you two cards of reach on the turn you cast it, but none thereafter. So it depends on if you want the uh, shorter term benefit or longer term. Generally speaking, in Infect, we're the kind of deck that wants the shorter term benefit. It gives us a greater chance of taking them out on that turn, or finding a protection spell that we might need on that turn. I say protection, I don't mean the keyword, I mean anything that keeps your creatures from dying. Vines, Blossoming Defense, Apostles, Blessings, Bell Pierce, yada yada yada. You get the idea. Uh, so you could run Sleight of Hand, you could run Serum Visions. If I'm going to keep to uh, Simic Infect, I'm going to be running some number of Sleight of Hand. Uh, and I'm going to be experimenting with that. I'm not saying it's the end-all, be-all, you must do this. Give it a try yourself. And I had su some success with it trying it that way. I think that you'll find some success yourself as well, for the reasons that I described a second ago. Let's also talk about a card that I think is going to see a good bit of resurgence in the main board, Twisted Image. Now if you're thinking, well wait a minute, Infect has been nerfed, and therefore we won't see as many spell skites. Be very careful about that, because on the one hand, yes, Infect has been nerfed. On the other hand, Bogles is probably going to start seeing more play. Part of that is because of the printing of Fatal Push. You print another low-to-the-ground spot removal spell, and it's going to help the decks that aren't hit by it. In this case, Bogles. It'll also help Eldrazi and Tron, for instance, but I think that this is the shot in the arm that Bogles needed. Not that they actually get a boost, but because a card that hates on other decks doesn't hate on them. If I'm right, Spellskite will sti still see a fair amount of play. But even if I'm wrong, let's say I'm completely wrong, Twisted Image has such a low opportunity cost that you could probably run it anyway. Not just because it kills Spell's Guide and Noble Hierarch and its Wall of Omens, etc., but because it's just a free instant speed way to replace itself. It serves, uh, I'm about to talk about Peak in just a second. This can actually take out one of their creatures as a blue card for one mana, and even if it doesn't, even if you're just hitting a creature that won't, that doesn't have zero power to start, you're still drawing a card. This is, 
This is one thing that I'm excited to try out, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you won't see a lot of uh, Spells Guide and similar cards running around. But maybe. It's, I think it's worth taking a, a slight risk, just because, the again, the opportunity cost is so little. And running an instant speed cantrip like that makes Become Immense better anyway. Um, so next there's Peak. Don't run Peak. It's a trap. Peak is a trap. It's a trap! It's a tarp! So, yes, Peak is instant speed, and it lets you look at your opponent's hand. It seems like this is what you would want to do. Getaxian Probe let you see their hand, but there's a world of difference between zero mana and one mana. You will have to rethink the way that you go about playing your Peak if you're going to try to do that because it's not Getaxian Probe. If you ever would tap out in order to play peak, that gives your opponent the ability to take out your creature with spot removal, say a lightning bolt or a fatal push, because you no longer have any mana to protect it. That's the difference between Getaxian Probe and Peak. Uh, with Probe, because it costs no mana, you didn't have to give up your ability to protect your creature. But with Peak, think of it as almost costing two mana because you have to the one to cast it, and then you have to keep up another one in order to protect your creature thereafter. That's why Peak is a trap. And the fact that it's instant speed does not do nearly enough to help you out. I'm sorry. There's not enough sorcery speed removal running around in Modern that it really merits that much inclusion. If this were a Ruinous Path format, Wretched Banquet format, that would be a different story, but there's way too much instant speed removal. The most played non-land card in Modern is Lightning Bolt. That in and of itself should be determinative. And that's pretty much all that I have to say on that. I'll be putting up a deck tech of my first Selesnya Infect list, my first draft if you will, and then I'll try it out for a couple weeks and see how it fares, and then after that if it, I feel it needs uh, tweaking, if it needs to be tinkered with a bit, we'll come back and revisit it, etc, etc. And if you have any other suggestions, by all means, please let me know. I've covered every color combination, haven't I, uh, for every two color combination that you could have for uh, Infect. So green and any other color, and you have a deck. You could have Simic Infect, and it's going to be a little bit gimped, but it's mostly the same game plan. You could have Golgari Infect, where you'll play Discard, and you'll have quite a bit of removal. Again, Dismember and Fatal Push. You could play Selesnya Infect, you'll be better able to protect your creatures, not through Discard, but through, again, Apostle's Blessing being easier to cast, and through other protection spells, plus you'll have the removal of Path to Exile and Auster Condemn if you want to run them. I might run those in the sideboard, actually, to start out. Just run Path in the main and then run those in the sideboard for decks that might warrant it. And then... Uh, Gruel, if you want to have a faster kill. Same thing with Mono Green. If you just want to go all in, then that's the way to go about doing it, I would suggest. If you have any uh, suggestions, any uh, sample decks, if you've seen a good article, if you've seen a good video on this, please let me know and it'll inform my decisions making deck techs and getting some games out for you. So that's all. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.